The left-wing organizations such as Care for Calais are taking Priti Patel to court over their new border control policies, and we're going to talk about why the Rwanda scheme is not enough. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the election night. The local elections are tonight, Thursday 5th of May. If you're watching it tonight on the 5th of May, then at 10.30 p.m. You we're going to be doing a live stream on this channel right here on YouTube, a live reaction to the local election result. I'm going to be analyzing it alongside Peter Barnes, the political editor of the channel. We're going to have a live chat. You're going to get, you guys are going to send questions and comments. We're going to have a drink. It's going to be great. So you've got nothing to do. If you want to watch the local elections, don't watch the legacy media, BBC and the likes of it. We're going to be watching it together right here. Now, let's talk about, uh, of course, something that's nothing to do with the nonsensical party political issues of the local elections. We have uh, more illegal migrants entering the country over the last couple of days, few days. We now have over 700 people crossing the English Channel, even though we had uh, about 10 days of peace. Some people said it was the weather. Nope, nope, nothing to do with the weather because we had chaotic weather in winter. People still came. It's, uh, as we explained yesterday on the channel, it was the pause that the smugglers were trying to see the reaction uh, from the UK government, see what they are uh, currently doing with the existing illegal migrants. Are they actually sending them to uh, places that are not four-star hotels? Well, nothing's changed. So, of course, they're going to get their clients and customers to come in as soon as possible. But this was uh, the last few days we had so many, and today even, we had three boats at least that had uh, around 60 migrants on the channel. It's fascinating, right? It's absolutely fascinating how the whole thing has now been exposed publicly over the last couple of years. We now are seeing in a very shameless way, the border force, the French authorities, and the, the whole operation is now being exposed. Every single time, people film it. You had Nigel Farage going to uh, Dover and the English Channel yesterday, the last couple of days, and then they no longer want to hide it. And, you know, the Home Office tried to have this policy they are going to be implementing uh, to kind of hide the daily figures of uh, migrants entering. H how is that going to help? Well, you know, they, they think if we don't know, then we're not going to care. If we don't know, we're going to ask more questions. You're going to create more cynicism. And this is the biggest issue that we have. Now you have uh, Care for Calais, who are taking the government to court. And they're, they're doing the fundraising. I'm not <laughs> plugging the fundraising. So hide hide the name. I don't care. We're not going to put any link. The issue here is that about £30,000 being raised. And they've got 21 days to go. And they are going to get the funding that they want. The problem I have is that if the Home Office we're introducing this Rwanda scheme. I really hope for the first time in the history of the Home Office and this government that they have already prepared for things like this. Because in the past, they were not prepared because they're too busy and being bureaucratic and out of touch. Every single time you had left-wing lawyers and or left-wing organizations taking them to court, they keep losing, right? Or stopping deportations. I really hope Priti Patel and Boris Johnson have had something in place so that any case like this would just lose or get thrown out of court. Because otherwise, what's the point of all this if you can't do anything about it? Now, Active Patriot, who goes uh, to Dover to uh, keep us up to date with the, uh, the latest, and uh, the people like you know, these guys, they don't really, they're not allowed to get close. They're not allowed. You're not allowed to actually film. So you have to do it secretly. At the same time, Active Patriot said, so myself and Little Veteran are banned from filming at the docks at Dover. The others who film there have to film from a distance, but care for Calais, or they're allowed to go right up and meet the migrants as they unload. <laughs> Although I'm sure they know most of them from the camps in France. Weird, right? Because, yeah, of course you might say there's a difference between a charity um, an activist and someone who wants to film for media. Sure, but at the same time, they've been saying that independent reporters can't really get close because of... Uh, to protect the identity of the illegal migrants. That's irrelevant now because everyone's wearing a face mask. <laughs> or you could also get people to blur faces, right? Secondly, they said you're going to cause trouble. You know, they were afraid that some people are going to go and basically, I don't know, harass them. Okay, what about, let's just say, credible mainstream media journalists. Get, get them to be there. 
You don't want it, right? Nobody wants, none of them there at Dover, Border Force, and the, the guys in charge, they don't want to be exposed. Nothing to do with the actual migrants. This is the biggest issue, this massive scandal that you have uh, with Care for Calais being going hand in hand uh, with, the, with the government. And at the same time, they bite the hands of the same government. The Care for Calais saying the last few days, this is a couple of days ago, uh, we've been carrying out a survey. You know what, what the reaction is to Rwanda, the, the plan? Almost everyone, 87%, that's not almost everyone, but yeah, yeah no, wait me. <laughs> almost everyone, 87% have heard uh, of the plan. But contrary to the government's claims, 75% say that it won't put them off crossing to the UK. Now, they have no choice. They fled danger, may okay, like, clearly they, France is still in a in chaotic situation, so they, it's a dangerous route. <laughs> France does not give you security. Security, we say, right? Okay, this takes us to the main problem with this government and this country. The Rwanda scheme is fine. It's something, but it's not enough. We've heard so many times that the issue that we have with illegal migration as mass migration is that we make this country so attractive and so welcoming <laughs> that, of course, they know that the moment they get here, they're going to get their free pizza and free hotels and free phones and free jobs and everything else. And this is why we are losing the battle. You can feel free to have a Rwanda scheme, you know, process the migrants somewhere else. Good. But you can't not change anything else about the system. Even Denmark and these countries have been attempting to make their countries not, it's nothing to do with being intolerant. It's to make it less attractive as a, as a magnet for illegal migrants. You know, we, we want to be attractive for economic, you know, a bit talented and those who can actually contribute economic migrants to come to this country. That's fine. But not really those who want to take advantage. Now, um, I'm going to come back in an hour or so, 10.30 p.m. I'm going to schedule a live stream. So join us, me and uh, Peter Barnes. Uh, we'll give you the live reaction to the local election results right here on this channel. TV is dead because we are the media.